Hi, I'm Johnny Vegas. Hello, my name's Jason Cook. My name is David Mominy. And welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. And welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. And welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. David Mominy, welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. How are you today? I'm real good. I'm a little tired. I've been filming today, but I'm 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 good. I'm good. Are you filming at the moment? I filmed a show called Sliced, uh, which will be on Dave. It's a new sitcom, and that is why I have a Craig. Middle Eastern Craig David look about me. Fantastic, it's very exciting. Now we are, we're on a boat at the moment going down the Thames. Tower Bridge. Tower Bridge over there. So I've just seen the first half of Death on the Tyne. Yeah. Very exciting must watch TV show coming to gold this Christmas. How did you get involved with it? Who are you playing? Tell me everything except who does the killing. Yeah, uh, I auditioned like a normal actor, but because of, I think because of Slice, they kind of knew of me because it's UK TV, also is in charge of Dave, as it's called. Um, and I play DJ Bobby, who is a DJ on the fine ship, uh, whose wife has left him. Um, he doesn't see the kids. And it just keep going really um, and I think he wants to be you know top entertainment on the ship but Emily um, who's the lounge singer just is always putting him down you know he's a really good DJ he's really good and he's got some moves as well as you might have seen um, he's just got some really good moves he has all the best DJs have they're, they're not just one-dimensional yeah, training mm. dance and then you and then that happens yeah. that's the DJ and then then you can apply the sound yeah, so you, you get the hand movement going first. Yeah, but through the body, you have to get the dancing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, you know. I, I understand, yeah, I, I did the training, but I did as a professional international DJ. You too good. They said no, YouTube. I, I mean, I've been spinning them fat rhymes on car journeys and all sorts. Yeah, and I, Shower. Because they wanted you to do it here, didn't they? They wanted you to do it for this event. They did. For the ship. The, exactly. the, the two of us coming together that... that it would, it would have been too much like that John Claude Van Damme film where there's two of them double impact. It would have been like that. That's right. That's exactly it. A 90s reference oh, for twins. three people. Twins, yes. Danny DeVito. And three Danny DeVitos. I am. <laughs> That's it. I just look like I've eaten Danny DeVito. I don't know what's going on. Come on now. I look like I've eaten Danny DeVito. Well, I don't know what we're saying. I know. It's all true, we though. Saying? It's all. We're just. This is a documentary. Oh, I've got a list of stuff that you've been in here. You've been in Mission Impossible Fallout. Yeah. I've watched that. Yeah. It's good. Thanks. Enjoyed I it. Seen it? Is that bad? I shouldn't say that. You don't. Well, you don't need to see it for it to it. exist. Isn't it? Important bits that they paid you, and then don't worry about they it. They did pay me. They did pay me. Yeah. yeah. That's all you need to know. You've been in Johnny English Strikes again. Yep. Have you seen that? Nope. It's just out though. It's just been out. It's just been out. I will watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I missed it in the cinema. Then just waiting for the DVD to come out. I'm noticing a bit of a trend. trend. There will be something you said, and I'll be like, I've seen it. Slice, have you seen? I'm watching it back sometimes on the monitor. Yep, yep, that's I'm good. In it now, so that's quite difficult. Like the dailies, the dailies are looking good. Yeah, I don't get to watch the dailies. Don't get to watch the dailies. Watch the dailies, but I just I'll just look at like little bits on the screen. But it's day three. Are you enjoying watching the bits on the screen? Yeah, it's really hard watching yourself. Yeah. It's grand. Like it's it's I'm, it's I'm really enjoying it. It's really really fun. Now, are you also in Hobbs and Shaw, the 2019 rock, Jason Statham's right. Fast it's and like Furious 55? Spin-off. Yes, yeah. exactly that. Um, and I had to have a scene with Idris Elba. Um, and then and I arrived on set and the director went here and it was just all new lines. And then we just improvised loads of it, which was fun. Amazing. Um, and we did it at the, what is it called? Mc, McFlaren? I don't know anything about cars. McFlurry? Mc, McLaren? McLaren? Could be. I, let's say it is. And a red car, blue car. Yeah, look, a car. Yeah. And, uh, Jimmy car. Jimmy car. Alan car. Alan car. Ah, oh, you got there first. Um, and uh, yeah, and it was there, and it was just like filming at a bomb buddy's house because they got mad money, yo. They got yeah, mad yeah. money. I hear ya. Yeah. I feel that. So, so that's what we did, and and, and did that. Death on the Tyne is, of course, a sequel to Murder on the Blackpool Express. Do you need to have watched? I mean, I'm sure you haven't seen it anyway, but do you need to have watched the first one to enjoy the sequel? Or no, I watched the first one. I, I don't think you do need to watch, actually. Yeah. Um, because they're self-contained sort of murder mysteries. I mean, maybe you might want to do it to learn a bit more about your sort of um, Johnny and Johnny and Sean's characters. Yeah. But um, no, they're self-contained because we're all new characters. So there's three. So, yeah, there's three of them, but, but the rest of us are all new. So there's a whole new story. So... 
you'd probably watch the second and then watch the first because you'd be so entranced by the second. It's true. You'd want to watch the first. I don't know if Gold do iPlayer, but let's say they do, you'd want to go on that. They do UK TV Play. They do UK TV. I'm, I'm sorry, UK TV. They do UK TV Play. And it's very good too. What were Johnny and Sean like to work with? They're just really lovely, really lovely. And I was, I was saying before, I was, um, it was a bit like I won a competition. And they're gonna hate me for saying this, but like you know, the whole cast is like people I grew up, grew up watching, in sitcoms like James was in Rick and Dibley, Felicity was in like Alan Partridge, and I think everyone thought I was quite boring because it was really quiet, just because you know what I mean. Um, and the loveliest and, and Johnny is 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 he made like a gluten free cake and um, but they were really really lovely they were really really lovely and funny and warm and sort of welcoming to everyone because it's there you know because they were obviously there last year so but they were really 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 lovely Gen genuinely not just said it for the interview I was you know it was really lovely and warm and everyone was really and we all got them really really well uh, it's an amazing cast isn't it it is it's a bit that's what I mean it was just a bit a bit overwhelming at first yeah. um, but luckily we had quite a lot of time on it and we would you know you saw i'm sort of d djing in every scene do you know what i mean so i'm sort of there all the time now was this show for anyone that wasn't involved in the production was this show filmed on a boat or a ferry so apparently there were scenes that were on a boat yeah. so i think there's one or two but no it was actually this, this studio um which they filmed things like the crown in and the bodyguard and they just the amazing art department just sort of did up the whole boat and um and gave it a new look and made it look something like this. Um, so no, and it was, do you remember the summer was really, 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 really hot? I think of little else. Roasting, um, and a lot of scenes were at night time, so they sort of blacked out everything as well. So you just felt like it was night time, and you'd go out and your eyes had to sort of adjust. Um, but no, it wasn't. And, I, and I'm saying that I got really excited because I, I didn't have time to read the script when I had the audition come through, because they wanted it straight away. I was like, and then like, you got an off, and I was like, I think, I think I'm going away on a job. I think I'm going to the Caribbean because it's set on a cruise ship and soon realised it's not a Caribbean cruise um, and it was a ship that goes from Newcastle to Amsterdam. Nice. Which my friend has said has been on and because it's so long yeah. they feel like they have to like do entertainment and they have to do things like that. Um, and so yeah, so, so it wasn't a boat. I didn't get that experience. I thought I was going to go to the Caribbean and it didn't, it didn't work out. You can independently of this. I could do. Yeah. Yeah, I might do. I'm not a cruise though. I think I'd want to. Would I want to do a cruise? Drive. Do a cruise. No. Yeah, it's just like a big. Sh it's just like big Westfields going around, isn't it? Although I did, I went on a cruise around the Mediterranean. That was quite nice. Although there's, the first day at sea was really sort of choppy. The boat was going up and down like this. Yeah. Well, I was just I bouncing know. on the bed. I don't know. <laughs> You was drunk. Yeah. Um, well, I, yeah, that's what I'd worry about. But everyone says it's so big that you don't really feel the sea, but you do. So the first day went from Mallorca to, and then it went to Italy and France and Spain and things like that. But the first day was at, at sea and it was quite choppy. Were you, did you feel sick? Very, yeah, yeah. Oh no, I'm not doing that. I didn't just feel sick, I almost tried in it. Oh yeah, I'm not doing it. Doesn't mind. Just a mad, 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 mad sea. Just going all the way down Sweet the corridor and all the way back up it. Slash Titanic, it was just a mess. Yeah. But no, I, I, I um, I'm not going on a cruise now. I think, I, I think I just get a plane. Good idea. I get a bit motion sick. And when we were watching just now, did you notice the boat was started to near the end? Yes. And I was like, are my eyes going? Am I just that tired? I know. I wondered that. Um, I wondered, are your eyes going? You is, is David's eyes yeah. tired? And I had another cocktail. And I thought, nah, probably not. Nah, it's the, it's the breeze. What's it called? Sea breeze. Yeah, some of them were. Some were wine. I think it was just juiced. <laughs> yeah. By the end of it, it doesn't taste alcoholic. Does it? It's like Robertson's squash. Delicious. Yeah, because I put alcohol on that too. <laughs> Spike everyone's drinks. I know. Like Ted. Exactly. J2O's. Delicious. They are delicious. They are really good. And at Christmas you get the ones with little gold bits That's in them. Awesome at Christmas, don't yeah. you? What, gold bits? Little gold bits, yeah. I don't know if they still do them. This was about eight years ago. What the gold bits? Like gold vodka? Is that the vibe they're trying to... Well, I think so, but the drink's only about pound twenty-nine, so it might have just been like a rusty bottle. Bottles don't even get rusty. What was it? It's of like gold tin foil. Oh, God. oh, that's sweet though. They're trying to jazz it up a bit. Oh, that's nice. It's really festive. It's like yeah. Are you making up? Isn't it gold J2O? No, there is. That's I'll lot. prove it to you. And why are you nodding? It's not. Cam the camera it's says there the is. Uh, I've never even heard the tripod talk before. Gold, gold J2O. 
It's like, true, I'll prove it. I will make a photo of Gold J2O appear. Now, like, because you're... Mm, can I push it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gold mm. J2O does not exist. <laughs> and then you're going to show it, aren't you? Yeah, I've just, I just have. Fake photo. That. Everyone's shaking their head now and going, it's really there. It's not there because you put the gold bits on for... It's CGI, isn't it? That's it. That's why they're, they're so expensive. No, I didn't know this conversation was going to go to gold. J2O made by Industrial Light and Magic. Yeah. Because 250 million. But what were they thinking? Yeah. Because the gold doesn't even show in the juice. No, it does it's a bit. No, it does. Because it's, it's a bottle. Go, go what? The bridge is going to go up. Oh, it's exciting. Hey, because it's, it's real. This is all real. Yeah, this is real. They didn't give a real boat for the show, but they have one for my show. Show. Because that was just the hot studio. Thank you very much for your time today. Have you got any messages for people watching the Sarah O'Connell show and your fans around the universe? My message would be, what are you doing this Christmas? Because I'm getting some gold J2O. It's a true story. It's going to appear again, isn't it? And then I'm going to do this and you're going to make it fly away. There it goes. Oh, it back. You know, the face. Jason, welcome to the Sarah O'Connell show. How are you today? I am very good and p potentially more drunk than is professional. Well, I anticipated this and I've joined you in that expedition. Teamwork makes the dream work. Sure does. That's one of my sayings too, I love that. We should high five. Choreographed months in advance. So, um, tell everyone at home what your role or roles were on Death on the Tyne. So, I am the writer of Death on the Tyne and its previous thing, uh, Murder on the Blackpool Express. And I also played Janus, the Dutch engineer who uh, has not a good time um, and gets uh, gets treated very badly. Well, there's no windows. Yes, there isn't. Not when you're in an engine room. And that's what I used to do before. I think they've got Max. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Thank you. Um, so, how long after the first one was made and filmed and all that good stuff did you start working on the sequel? And how long did that take to write? Um, so after the first one went out we got really good figures, we brought the record um, for the, the channel, for the, the, the most watched thing they've ever broadcast and then we started immediately just getting ideas together and they had asked us to pitch some ideas so we went with five, uh, but this one was my favourite, so they picked this one. They're very good at just saying, if we bring five and then they go, which one is your favourite? And this one was my favourite. And for anyone that, that doesn't know, what is this show about? It's a murder mystery, yeah. which is set on a budget cruise ship that goes from Newcastle to Amsterdam with Johnny Vegas and Sean Gibson in the starring roles as people who run a rundown coach tour company. And is it sort of inspired by the works of Agatha Christie, the murder mystery, but obviously a lot funnier? Unless you find Agatha Christie particularly funny. Yeah, well it was supposed to be like a working class version of these things are always quite middle class or upper class like oh no he was in the drawing room and then he was hit by a compass so this is like a, a, a relatable working class uh, funny take on what a murder mystery is that's the whole vibe of it absolutely now there's a fantastic cast did you write the script with the cast in mind or did you write it and then cast the cast um, we knew we had Johnny Vegas and Sean Gibson yep. from the first one uh, and Sheila Gibson and so we just uh, looked I just wrote the characters and then we found great actors and aimed very very high to get the greatest comedy actors in British comedy which we did um, and because of, I think because Johnny and Sean have told everyone the first one was a really nice job to do and it was really fun it's much easier to get people to come and do it now so we have some amazing people on this one absolutely and have you have you already started thinking about a potential next one yeah, well, I've got like about 12 of them that I know what the stories are. Oh, wow. They're in... Um, the tell me them. Tell me, tell you them. Yeah, just tell me them all now. Uh, oh, God, there's one that's set in a conference for all uh, coach tour operators. There's one that is set uh, in France in a, uh, a, a in the middle of a lake. There's a gîte that you would rent in France. There's murders that happen there. There is... Uh, the best one, I thought, is one on a plane where um, there's poisoned food just so Johnny Vegas gets to say we've got to get these goddamn steak bakes off this plane which is a real Samuel L. Jackson ripoff. I mean admittedly that's not really an idea it's a line and a premise but I, I could stretch that out to 90 minutes. I think you should. Less has been stretched further. <laughs> yes. Like these jeans. 
I couldn't agree more. Mm. At, the, at the notion of things being stretched. Absolutely. Now, tell me a bit about the, the dolphin. Because, just to explain, so we're on a boat at the moment and there's been a dolphin wandering around. Uh, uh, an innocent looking dolphin, I thought, but now that I've seen the show, I'm actually quite fearful of said dolphin. Yes, well, well Dippy the dolphin is the mascot of the ship. Um, so without giving away anything, uh, Dippy the dolphin may not be the innocent mammal that many people would believe a dolphin to be. He could be a very naughty dolphin. Really, really bad dolphin. At the end, will he come up and will there be fin written in blood on his tummy? Or on his fin? That makes more sense. Or will it just show his fin? That's a really good joke. Um, we need to change the ends! <laughs> That's a really good joke, well done. Thank you. You can have this. Still time, got a month. <laughs> no, there isn't. I missed that. <laughs> you can have it on the plain one. And they, the, the, the fin, Are they fins on the end of a better on a dolphin though mate isn't it yeah, but if it's food poisoning you could have thin and then this crispy pancake yeah but knowing the way major companies deal with the things that are right they'll ban me immediately yeah they probably won't want to be associated they did didn't they what they what's table and called in the show again uh chalky mound <laughs> which i don't think is everyone knows what it is i don't think it's better I thought that was a code name for a blocked up toilet, but it. Well, on certain kinds of party in German nightclubs, I think. But <laughs> welcome to the Chalky Mound. <laughs> Put on your wellies and jump right in. It's a true story. So, what are your your favourite scenes from the new show? My favourite scenes in the new show um, are whenever uh, Mildred, played by Sheila Gibson, gets her her amorous scenes with Captain Jack and uh, the, the duty-free scene because I got Jane McDonald to do a perfume advert which she has a real great sense of humour about herself. She has a perfume called Jane McDonald's Secretions and she did it straight for us and I was amazed that she did and I'm very proud of her. I'll be looking out for that in the shops this Christmas. It could be around, I think it'll probably smell like builders. But Fantastic. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be good fun. Yeah. So the show expertly balances. Um, it's got a, it's got heart to it. It's comedy as well, but there's also bloody murder. Yeah. Is it difficult, you know, to because you introduce these characters and then you sort of fall in love with them and then they they die and you're sad about that, but then it's still funny. Is it difficult keeping that striking that balance? Um, I think as long as they're real, like they're real in my head when I think about them. Yeah. And uh, I spend a lot of time on my own. <laughs> I just spend a lot of time on my own. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, thinking about how these people would think and, and breathe and say things. And um, so, like, if, if the relationships are real or warm or anything, then that's the, the product of doing that. Um, I, just, I always like to have warmth in anything that I do. I think it, it's important. I don't think there's a lot of it on television. And I think it's nice to have a show that's like a bit of a cuddle as well. Even those people getting killed, it's a bit daft and silly. But at the heart of it, there's people who like love each other and want to protect each other. I don't think that's a bad thing to do any, uh, anymore. I'm not sure if it's very fashionable, but I, I, I believe in it. Exactly. It's had some of the nicest killings I've seen on TV recently. Thank you. I like to think that when they die, you go, oh, well, at least it was nice. It was, it was lovely, yeah. <laughs> That's mint. <laughs> Is there anybody that you regret killing in the first one that you later wish was in the second? Or have you, is there anyone that you also have killed that you've thought of ways of bringing them back or someone that looks like them back? Uh, well, because we get such great comedy actors, like proper British comedy royalty, I would have resurrected all of the people that we killed, but Nigel Havers was a particular cast favourite with all of the women and everyone wanted Nigel Havers back. So as we said in the press conference, we did genuinely think about getting Nigel Havers to have a secret twin who parted his hair a different way. Um, but in the end, it was thought to be not believable enough, but Havers is amazing. He's exactly what you think he'd be. He's incredible. He's a legend. Well, when we finished filming the first one, he, um, he grabbed me and he kissed me on the head and he said, you're a very clever boy, and I've never felt so giddy in all my life. <laughs> Thank you, Nigel. <laughs> it's very lovely. So you, you need him back to re be able to recreate that feeling again, don't you? Just to kiss me on the head, I think it was yeah. all I'm, I'm, I'm really wanting. 
Oh, I've just thought of a way of getting them in the third one, but I won't tell you. <gasps> oh, what a nasty pasty I turned out to be. Very exciting. So, have you started writing the third one yet? I've always got ideas. I'm always writing stuff down. So there's a, you know, I write every day. So yeah, I've got loads of ideas for the third one. I've got loads of ideas for a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Um, it's just if they want them. And if enough people watch this one. So please watch it. Yeah. Or you could do what my mum does and she puts it on in every telly in her house. Even though it still just counts as one viewer. But I do enjoy it, Mother. Thank you very much, you mad old woman. Well, that's the thing. And the kind of shows that... You know, stuff on gold traditionally is classic television, isn't it? And I, I think that these uh, shows fit in with that as well. And I think they're the kind of thing that people enjoy watching What's when they're repeating. Yeah, wow. I know. Wow. Hashtag heard it here first. I'd totally be on board with that classification. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's just warm, warm, daft, funny telly. That's all I want it to be. I don't want to, you know, there's no message. <laughs> In it, you know, there's no underlying anything. It's just about warm, daft, inclusive telly for everyone to enjoy. There is a message. Don't provoke people near cake. Indeed. And try not to be involved in murder is always a good one. Or get caught. Or get caught. Yeah. Yeah. By an egotistical slip that leads to a very important speech at the end of a 90-minute show. <laughs> Always happens, doesn't it? Aren't they? Aren't, don't murderers love a bit of that? Isn't that madness? I suppose, I suppose because they appreciate their own work, so they, they want to show off a bit to the people before, and that's always their downfall, as well it should be. I mean, to be fair, I've in telly killed however many people are killed in this show, and I'm now enjoying my own work with you. So, yeah. Am I a murderer? Was it me? In the end, who knows? I'm the same, but I just kill people with kindness. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Like a diabetic sugar killer. Basically, but no. <laughs> That is the best interview question, question and answer I've had. Basically, but no, is a great response. Thank you, Simon. That was pretty scripted. I, di I didn't know how that was going to work that in. Yeah, you flew it out. It landed. That did. Was, that was incredible. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're good. You're funny. I'm a, I'm a qualified comic. You are. I've done the courses and everything. Have you? What kind of courses have you done? No, I didn't do any courses. I just became a comedian for 20 years. You're not a proper comedian until you've driven home crying. That's my rule. Mine was at Birmingham in 2005. What happened? I died so badly that they booed me off and then they said I didn't get my money unless I went back on and did my time. So I went back on and they booed me even more. And oh I'm my standing, God. I'm standing there going, I don't know what you want, <laughs> but I have to stand here or I don't get my money. <laughs> and one of the guys went, I'll give you your money. And I was going, it's probably more than you imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got my money and cried driving home. You got your money? I got my money. Yeah. And I still kept coming back. I never played that gig again. Are you coming without time travel? I don't want to go back. <laughs> I think sometimes it's a, the audience might have been wrong, the wrong audience. The audience were right, it wasn't funny, it was very early days. Yeah. But they could have been nicer about it. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of being so blades. And they were fucking blades. I didn't need to point the microphone at that headshake, did I? wanted to so tell me what are you working on next what are you doing next what is next for you in your life uh, tomorrow morning I'll be working on uh, tonight's hangover yeah. uh, and then what am I doing on Friday I'm doing a gig and then on Saturday I'm cooking a steak dinner for some friends actually what time because we're, we're friends obviously yeah. so what time is that uh, get seven seven yeah seven, up in Newcastle yep that's fine uh, bring a couple bottles of red wine Yep. My dog will uh, get overexcited and piss when it sees you because my dog is... I get that a lot. Yeah, it's an absolute letdown. But yeah, my dog, I'm just kidding. Bella, I love you. Even if you're watching, daddy's baby. Love you, Bella. Thanks for watching my show. And then on Sunday, I'm going to recover from a hangover and then Monday, I'm going to start... What am I doing on Monday? Probably do the school run. Yeah. And then uh, wonder where my life's gone. Well, you can watch your back on this and you'll know. That'd be amazing. Yeah. So are you, are you still uh, performing comedy sort of full time and things as well? Are you still no, gigging? Not full time, I just do bits every now and again. Yeah. Tower of London, mate. Tower of Tower London. London. You don't even believe us, it's Tower of London. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and there's, there's uh, Tower Bridge as well. Yeah. Well, 
It's your first time in London, isn't it? It's very exciting. <laughs> it's my first time on a boat in London, oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Having the best time. It is, I'm just living my best life. This, yeah. is, this is amazing. Where's the Tower of London gone? God, there's so much mystery and magic in this place. There is. What messages have you got for people watching the Sarah O'Connell show? Why should they watch the show? Why should they tune in? Tell me everything. I'd just like to thank everyone for voting. Um, I want Jedward for Judges Houses. Uh, and watch the Sarah O'Connell show because it is the greatest show on the internet, bar none. And if you don't watch the Sarah O'Connell show, you're letting yourself down and those who love you. Clip, clip, clip that bit. That's good. No, I like that. That's the only bit I'm using. That's fine. I don't mind. So thank you so much for your time. I'm very much looking forward to watching the rest of the show when it airs this Christmas and in future Christmases, I'm sure. Let's hope so. That'd yeah. be great. Well, thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. Not my favourite interview either I've had in the last 15 minutes. Oh my God, do I get an award? Yeah. Or do I just get it from the last guy? I'll buy, I'll buy you a drink. On a free bar gig, that's a nice boost. That's my plan. Thanks, mate. Johnny, welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. Uh, we've been plagued with alcohol, uh, promoting the show. And that's not why I'm good. It's because we've been, I, I think it's our third trip under the London Bridge, watching it open and close. And now we're over the engine room, so if anyone can hear this deep <laughs> rumbling, it's, we haven't got food poisoning or anything. It's just this, uh, there's like an anger between us. There is. Almost like a tension. But not in, you know, that kind of Harvey Weinstein way. Just, no, just, just a boat tension of a, an engine. Exactly, it's exactly what it is. Now, uh, Johnny, you are returning for Death on the Tyne, a yeah. sequel to Murder on the Blackpool Express. Tell us about your, your character. How has he evolved since the first film after being witness to some terrible, terrible murders? Oh, well, Teddy, he's still very sceptical yeah. of most things. But he is in a place that he never thought he would be, which is he's in a relationship with a lady that he has uh, watched for years, you know what I mean, worked with for years, and now they are, they're a couple. So, but they're a couple that are working together as well as living together. There's a couple of giveaways there of he's moved himself in <laughs> with her to live with her. Um, and he's in a he's in a great place. He's, he's actually life is better than he ever thought possible. I think uh, Shan's character wants to keep the business afloat. He's just kind of going, I don't care what happens to the business or anything. Terry is just with his uh, dream girl, uh, and the last thing he needs right now is a lot more people dying. You'd, th you'd think you would have got away from that. You're not on a coach, you're on a boat, and things just start going disastrously wrong again, don't they? Well, it's supposed to be a one-in-a-lifetime thing, isn't it, where you're going, do you know I was there, and do you know I witnessed that? And it, um, it is that classic kind of, death follows them. <laughs> I don't know where to supercharge you for serial killers, but, uh, yeah, well, 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 although this time, I think Terry's so happy, He's in denial of what's going on. And actually, in, in, if you look at the first one, it's Terry that's going, it's my character going, there's something afoot here. Now he's kind of going, I don't care what's going on. I want to ask you to marry me. And in between that, he's ignoring the blatant, well, once the murder starts, I know what you saw tonight, but once the carnage begins, he's still in denial because he's just kind of going, I just want to put a ring on your finger. So, it, it's quite sad. And yet, there's a really good twist within that of going, he is the Poirot of the relationship. Absolutely. He's the guy who works, he works things out. So it kind of bring, it brought them together in the in the first show, didn't it? And now in, in the second one, they're, they're hopefully past that and just looking forward to spending their lives together. But of course, it all goes wrong. Well, yeah, but then he's looking forward to spending their lives together. She's, uh, Sharon's character's a lot more pragmatic. So he's going, right, we're sorted. She's kind of going, I haven't even thought of that. 
So there's a faltering romance going on in between murder of, of you know, fools rushing. Oh, uh, no, I'm, I'm going to miss quote. I'm going to sound like Donald Trump. <laughs> One of the best Matthew Perry films. He is, is, is ready to sort of go to pop a, a certain very important question. She is totally, I, I don't think sees it coming and is um, happy with the strategy. It's not that she doesn't want to marry him, she just didn't see it coming. So his purpose for the trip is totally different to us. She sees it as, oh, the tour's taking on a new thing, we're going European, you know what I mean? We're, we're branching out. Whereas for him, he's kind of going, I want to cement this because he knows it's the best thing that's ever happened to him. And in between it, as always, life doesn't quite go to, it don't go to plan. It doesn't, does it? Does, does it? Do you know when you get your parking tarmac yeah. and then your neighbour, your neighbour, I don't know, somebody who keeps parking across your drive, so you can't even park where you paid for, or if, say for example, you're living on an adopted street yeah. and um, you, you, you repave it. But then your scout's neighbour just keeps parking his work vans across access points and parking them on your in work vans and cracking the flags. I mean, I'm not saying that's obviously it doesn't happen in real life. No. Nightmare. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? What were that inconsiderate? <laughs> Very fortunate that I don't have a, a scout's neighbour who, who who does things like that. Because if I did, I mean, it would drive you mad. Thank God we have gun control in this country. <laughs> it's very true. I'm, um, I'm told we need to evacuate the boat. So well, we don't need to evacuate. That's a bit drastic, isn't it? We need to leave the boat. We don't need to evacuate. It's not tipping over. Evacuate the boat. And do you know why? Because it's pulled into port. It's into port! Jenny Vegas, thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you, because uh, so rarely do I get to express my feelings as an actor. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to share, subscribe, give the video what a big thumbs up. <laughs> Sorry, go finish. Yeah, I will. Be sure to share, subscribe, give the video a big thumbs up, and see you all again where soon. Is it down there. Down there. Yeah, that's where my knees are. Uh, click on my knees, and I'll see you all again soon for another episode of the Sarah O'Connell Show. Bye.